Welcome, everyone. Before we get started, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. North Dakota State should join us here in about five minutes, but a couple of quick housekeeping items. Please make sure to silence your cell phones. Please make sure uh, you are aware that there is no recording um, on your own, but it is being recorded for you. So you, there is a malt box distribution in the uh, hallway, and feel free to plug in there to get anything you need. Uh, there. When you're asking a question, please state your name and affiliation. That is very helpful. Uh, and then also, if you do have a question, we have our fine mic holder back here who would be glad to hand off uh, that mic to you. So just try and get my attention. I'll do my best to get all of your questions in in a timely fashion, but that way we can hear your question. So I'll uh, welcome North Dakota State in just a minute, but thank you for being here.
Again, welcome everyone to today's first press conference for the NCAA Division I FCS Championship. Um, I am joined by North Dakota State head coach Matt Entz, uh, Jabril Cox, uh, Trey Lance, and Derek Tuska. Um, we'll open with a first with a, an opening statement with Coach Entz, and then we will direct all questions to our student athletes. Uh, following that, uh, they will be dismissed, and, and Coach will take over from there. So, Coach, I'll turn it over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, super excited to be here today and uh, know that uh, we are going to play an outstanding football team uh, tomorrow in, in James Madison University. Uh, you look at their roster, uh, a ton of talent. Uh, they, they've won uh, some, some big time games. Uh, they play in a great league uh, and we're going to have to play at our best to, to have an opportunity to compete with them and we look forward to it. Uh, you know, our, our 14 seniors have been a big part of the reason why we're here this year, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them uh, before we get into questions. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, if you have questions for a student athlete, let me know. Uh, Jeff Kopak with the Forum newspaper in Fargo. Uh, Trey, uh, weather tomorrow could be, who knows, uh, uh, Rainy, windy, how do you deal with that? Uh, we'll be all right. You know, we're from Fargo, uh, so we practice in, you know, I'd like to think the worst. Um, it was about negative 14 when we left Fargo, uh, so it, it'll, be, it'll be like uh, like a spring game to us. We'll be all right. Uh, Nick, Nick Cousin, KVR, Derek and Jabril, uh, what challenges do Danucci present? Derek, do you want to go first? Yeah, he's a good quarterback. Uh, got some experience back there. Um, he makes a lot of plays happen, and uh, he extends plays a lot of times uh, just by his, his athletic ability uh, and, and just keeping his eyes downfield. Uh, he can feel pressure and escape up the middle, uh, so that's something we got to keep an eye on. But, um, I mean, we play some athletic quarterbacks as well, so uh, we're excited for the challenge. Yeah, hey, going off what Derek said, uh, he's a very veteran quarterback, so he's not – uh, new to this, he's uh, basically he, he has the dual threat ability as well. Uh, he likes to run around and extend plays. Might not make the smartest of plays, but he'll try to do whatever he has to do to help his team win. Is there a question up front? Yeah. Dom Izzo, WDAY. Uh, Trey, if you happen to hear your name, that you win the Peyton tonight, any thoughts about that if you end up being the player of the year in the division? Uh, it's a huge honor, obviously, to be even in the conversation for that. Uh, I've said it before, wouldn't be in it without the coaching staff, uh, the position they put me in to be successful, uh, the guys around me uh, getting to this point uh, in the season, uh, and Zeb and Noah. I got to give a huge shout out to those guys uh, and Easton, you know, as well, just the guys that have came before me. Uh, wouldn't be anywhere in the conversation without those guys, but at the same time, 100% focus on tomorrow. Back here in the back. Uh, Derek and Jabril, just what do you expect as far as the physicality? Uh, you know, tomorrow's two teams who you know love to run the ball, two teams who can stop the run. Just um, what do you expect in that area, and just how uh, I guess important will it be to establish that uh, early uh, on your end? Yeah, with the physicality, uh, I, I've said it before. The Missouri Valley, in my opinion, is probably one of the most physical conferences in the country. So um, it won't be anything new to us. Uh, that's definitely something that we have to be the more physical team from the start, from start to finish. Um, and then with that, uh, we'll take care of business. Yeah, th yeah this is going to be a game that we're used to. Uh, we played all season going through. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to go whoever makes the most mistakes, that's the team that's going to lose. So we just have to m make our run fits and just execute our plays. Up here in the front. Alex P P P Penzigala at AM 1100, the flag. I've got a question for Trey. How happy are you to have F F Phoenix Sproles back and, and just overall your, your offensive weapons? Yeah, super happy that Phoenix is healthy. Uh, you know, I know he was bummed he couldn't go uh, in the semifinal, but he's, he's feeling really good right now. Uh, everyone's happy. You know, his energy is something that, that separates him uh, from a lot of guys, uh, even on our roster. Uh, he's just a fun guy to be around, uh, one of my best friends, uh, and just super happy for him. I'm excited. Staying here in the front. Uh, Derek, what's the vibe on a Friday before these title games? Loose, tight, fun, you know, along those lines? Uh, I mean, everybody's locked in and focused. Um, we're here for one reason, that's to win. Uh, so everybody, all the coaches, all the players, we're all just locked in, ready to go. Um, 
in my opinion, all this whole week leading up to it is, is a big distraction. I think we've handled it really well, especially with younger guys, uh, not letting it be too big of a distraction, and ultimately know what we're here for. So. Right here in the center. Jackson Roberts, KVR. Derek, how do you tell those younger guys to handle that distraction specifically? I mean, I've mentioned it to uh, a number of young guys. Enjoy it. Uh, take it all in. And uh, don't take any of it for granted. But ultimately, you've got to be still watching film, uh, still in the playbook, because you don't want to get too far away from why we're here. Um, we, we, got, we had some uh, incredible opportunities to go to the Miracle League and stuff like that, um, which was awesome for the younger guys to experience that. Uh, us up front have, have been there a few times. So uh, we kind of knew what it was going to be like, but just keeping those younger guys on the same page and, and locked in. Any additional questions for the student athletes? Oh, I think we have one more. Uh, Trey, what have been your impressions of the uh, JMU secondary on, on tape? Uh, you've obviously done a great job of taking care of the ball this year. What will be the key to doing that against against this group? Uh, just being smart uh, and being prepared. I think you know, just confidence is key with everything we do offensively. Uh, but they're super talented defensively. You know, in the secondary, especially obviously the two DNs um, that are two of the best players in the country. You know, especially statistically, uh, they're really good players. I think as a defense, they play play really well together. Uh, really well coached, you know, they're confident, uh, and I think it really shows on film. Uh, Kyle Kansen with uh, Flow Sports. Uh, this is for all three of you guys. In, in terms of team sports, you guys have the most championships as a program since John Wooden's UCLA basketball teams. Does the magnitude of being part of something so historic ever kind of hit you where you realize, you know, what you're a part of? Jabril, I'll let you take this one first and we'll go down the line. I think right now, a lot of the guys, we're just living in the moment and just enjoying it. But as we get done with our career, we'll look back on it and we'll see the impact that we have, just not on the state of North Dakota, but as college football as a whole, and we'll really cherish it. Yeah, similar to what Jabril said, um, just super thankful for the opportunity to be here, uh, you know, living in the moment. Uh, this is all new to me this year, you know, being the first time starter and everything. Uh, so just, you know, just trying to take it all in and enjoy it. Yeah, they said it all right there, so. Any additional questions for our student athletes? One more up front. Trey, I wonder, I know I've, maybe I haven't asked you this, but was there a specific moment when you knew you had something with Christian Watson? And it, was it a game, a practice where he said, boy, we get on the same page, we can be really, really, really good? I think even this summer, you know, we got together and he was finally getting, you know, to be really 100% for the first time, you know, since he's, since he's been up here. Uh, just his level of focus uh, and maturity, I think, uh, just picked up really from when I met him, you know, when I was on visits here uh, or at North Dakota State. Uh, just his level of athleticism is something that everyone kind of knew, uh, at least on our end. Um, that's why, you know, kind of when you guys talked about the worrying about, you know, the, the inexperience in the receiver room, uh, that was just something that I didn't really worry about uh, going into this year with guys like Phoenix, uh, Jimmy, and Christian, just because I got to see, you know, how much they had grown up uh, over the course of the last two years. Okay. Any additionals? All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. You. We'll let them exit, and then we'll uh, direct questions to Coach. Okay. Our first question for Coach Madins. <clears throat> Hey, Coach, Dave Thomas from JMU Radio. Now that you're a head coach, this layoff between the semifinal and the championship, was it in any way different for you now that you're a head coach running the program versus just being a coordinator? And how did you try to manage that time? Well, uh, you know, the first thing was I needed to put together a plan. And so probably uh, our, op our operations uh, uh, coordinator, Josh Cattell, and I probably before the semifinal game uh, behind closed doors had a plan put together for the what ifs. Uh, it, this, the calendar year provided some uh, unique challenges because of a 12 game season playing into late December and, and, and right up on the heels of Christmas. Uh, we wanted to make sure we, our kids did have a few days off before we started the, 
infamous winter camp that we call it, but uh, uh, it was good. Our, our kids, we got them back on campus. They enjoy it. Uh, we, we try to keep it somewhat light. Uh, it's a great time of the year for us to develop our young kids. Uh, I think that's a, a big reason or a big component of why we've been successful over years is, is we take full advantage of these days. And um, it, it, you know, our 14 seniors did a great job of leading throughout our, the extra weeks. But uh, it, it was a little bit different than what I was used to as far as just how practice was set up, uh, practicing straight through up until this date. Did you have one right up here? Um, same thing I asked, Derek. How how do you handle the weather today? How are you dealing with that? And uh, possibilities tomorrow of it being not so perfect? Well, you know, probably have to make some decisions early. Uh, you know, do you take the football uh, instead of uh, deferring to the second half just with the idea of where's the weather going to be at and, how, and how, how's the weather going to play a role, uh, what the field conditions are. Uh, it, it, field conditions are going to be best early uh, in the game. Uh, so there's probably always uh, a thought process of do you take the ball right off the bat when your footing is going to be at its best. And, and, and uh, then throw the wind in there. And I anticipate it will come out of the north here uh, here in Frisco. And so uh, that always, too, uh, will, will throw a, a wrinkle into things. But at the end of the day, both teams are going to play in the same weather. And so we're not going to make any excuses. Uh, we, we need to have great energy and execute uh, like we have all season long. Uh, you know, I, I, I chuckle when I hear the, the response of our players. Um, we played in some bad weather at practice before, and, and uh, we'll, we'll go back to those days uh, uh, if, it's, if weather does provide some, some challenges. Okay. What are you doing today? Uh, we're going to practice indoors today. Uh, we're going to have just a quick walk through, and uh, of course, we'll connect with our, a lot of our former players today are in town. Coach, there in the second row. Isaac Dinas and Bison Information Network. Given the weather conditions for tomorrow, which would you prioritize more? You've talked about these extensively um, in terms of turnover possession or starting fast, tur like tur controlling the turnovers and starting quickly. Which would you pri prioritize more in these type of I want to start. I, I want to make sure we start fast tomorrow. Uh, you know, I think the team uh, with the weather, uh, the team that scores first might be able to protect that lead, and you never know. Uh, depends on how how poor or good the weather gets. And, and so I think if we can start fast uh, during the course of the game, I think that gives us a clear advantage. And then on the other side, how important is it to put pressure on the quarterback? Well, it's always a, a critical piece. Uh, we need to make sure uh, getting pressure on a quarterback is great, but if he's getting out of the pocket, then it becomes an issue. We need to do a great job of keeping him in the pocket. Uh, you know, our, our defensive guys are fully aware of, of Ben's ability uh, to extend plays, uh, find receivers downfield, and he's got some really good ones. So uh, our, the challenge is, is up for everybody uh, from our back end to our front seven. Uh, what makes uh, JMU's defense uh, so special? I'm sorry, think, can you just identify yourself really quickly? Sorry, Nick Cousin, KVRR. Thank you. I, I think they're, they're front seven, uh, physical. Uh, they, they got two defensive ends that, that got great inside moves and are going to challenge our offensive tackles. Uh, solid up front in their defensive tackle play. Big uh, physical players, uh, guys that have played a lot of football. You look at their, their roster, uh, especially on defense, full of juniors and seniors. Uh, guys who, who play in an outstanding league, the CAA, have been in the playoffs. Uh, many of them have been to the national championship game. Uh, and then I, I think they're, they're Mike Linebacker. I'm going to use number 52. I think his last name's Word. Uh, I think he's a really good football player. Jumped off the screen when I was able to watch uh, a lot of the offensive clips. Go to the back. Coach Bobby Broyles with CA Football. Uh, how would you compare the, and contrast the two conferences? Obviously, played Delaware this year, JMU in the past. You have Towson on your future schedule, uh, so you have a lot of familiarity with the CAA. How would you compare both uh, the Missouri Valley and the, and the CA? Well, yeah, I don't know if I can. We've only played two two teams in my time here. It's been the same two, uh, JMU and, and, and Delaware. Uh, I think it's a very talented football league. You just watch the, uh, the, the film. Uh, it doesn't lie. I think there's a lot of athletes running around, uh, consistent play up front. Uh, and, and you know, uh, Missouri Valley, we, we, we pride ourselves on being good on the line of scrimmage, and I think the CAA does as well. And uh, then I think you throw in the, the mix of, uh, of, of four-year transfers or FBS transfers, and that really elevates the talent that's on a lot of the rosters in the CAA. Back here in the front. To you. Dom is OWDAY. Is there going to be a moment you will take tomorrow to, to appreciate first year in the <laughs> national championship game? Before, if, if you, will you do that tomorrow at all? 
Probably not tomorrow. Uh, you know, you know me, Dom. Uh, I'll be uh, wired and ready to go and excited. Uh, probably not really in the mood of talking to a whole lot of people, but uh, uh, I have been reminded by a couple members of our staff to make sure I do enjoy it. Uh, it's been full speed ahead. The, we haven't taken the, the foot off the gas, uh, and I, I I do appreciate this moment. I appreciate our our, our kids, uh, their their approach to practice every day, um, their. Uh, chip on their shoulder mentality uh, that I that I mentioned this morning to them, uh, I thought was was a big part of why we're here and, and, and why we've had a lot of success during the season. Jackson Roberts, KVR coach. To that end, what's the key to keeping everyone so focused despite how big of a stage this is? Well, I, I think part of it is is leaning on our seniors uh, who've been here before, who've gone through this process. Uh, once we got to Frisco, we didn't deviate the schedule a whole lot than what it was a year ago. Uh, I think just routinely and consistent message that we're going to make the game the main thing. Uh, yeah, were there some other events that we enjoyed? Uh, the Miracle League, the Barbecue Bowl, yes. Uh, but we consistently talked about we were here to win a football game. We were here to compete at the very highest level. Um, and, and that this says a lot about our, our staff and our, and our seniors, as I mentioned. Uh, when you can keep a team uh, that on the calendar is as young as ours right now and as, as many teenagers uh, that we have with us. Uh, Jeff Kopak, The Farm. Matt, this is probably the youngest team NDSU has had here. Any concerns on, a, on them being too tight? This week, what have you seen in your team? <laughs> sometimes, even today? I, sometimes I have the opposite concern. Uh, you know, uh, it's not it's not tightness; it's uh, uh, the number of TikTok uh, uh, productions they have. So, um, no, I'm excited. You're you're exactly right. We do have an extremely young football team, based when you look at their their date of birth. Uh, but we we have had some great experience this year. We've played a lot of people. Uh, and and we, we, the way we practice, I think it prepares our kids to play on this stage. Uh, I, I'm not concerned about, about focus. Uh, what I am concerned about at times because of our youthfulness is getting so amped up and so excited that we need a moment to kind of let things slow down for us. And uh, hopefully we can, we can do that during warm-ups and we can kind of get that initial energy out and then reel them back in before kickoff. Alex Penzagala, AM 1100, the flag in Fargo. Um, how pleased have you been with the maturity of your younger players this season? Uh, you know, I've been pleased. Uh, of course, uh, I'd be lying to you if I said uh, they make good decisions all the time or they're always on time or uh, they never miss a class. Um, but overall, when you, when you have as many young kids as we do on the football team right now and newcomers to college football, uh, extremely excited about – uh, the race to maturity that we talk about a lot at NDSU, uh, those guys have shown it. Uh, and as the season has prolonged, they've continued to, uh, to do what we ask and continue to show that they're maturing into, in, into what we expect, and that's good bison. Uh, Eric Peterson, Forum Newspaper in Fargo. Uh, if Trey Lance is to win the, the Peyton Award tonight, uh, what, why do you think he's deserved it, or what do you think he's done to this point of this season to, to be able to win an award like that? Well, I, I think the, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, he's... Uh, starting quarterback for a team that's 15 and 0. He hasn't turned the football over. Um, he, you know, has, has, you know, I haven't looked statistically. Probably our leading rusher uh, has done a number of, of positive things. So if, if if his numbers aren't good enough, uh, you know, I, I don't think Trey's going to worry about it too much, or neither am I. Uh, if you were to ask him, and I, and I know he would tell you the same thing. The only trophy he's worried about uh, is the one that they hand out on the stage over there. Back here. Greg Medea, Daily News record in Harrisonburg. Uh, James Madison's two running backs that get the most carries, a Jay Obisay and Hamilton. What are the different challenges both of those running backs provide? Well, the, you know, the, physically they provide just a little bit of some differences, uh, you know, in size and makeup. Uh, and so, you know, breaking tackles is the one thing that both these guys do an outstanding job. They play behind a veteran offensive line. Uh, there's either two or three seniors on that group, and then I think everyone else is an upperclassman or a junior. Uh, we've probably played against a number of them, you know, previously. So, you know, they trust their offensive line. They're going to continue to have a consistent run game. But uh, – what it does, it makes forces you to have to tackle all game long, and and, and that becomes difficult. Uh, you know, we, the same recipe we try to do is keep, you know, force feeding the run game, and, and eventually one's going to pop, one's going to bust the tackle, and you're going to have an explosive play. Back here in the front. Uh, Coach Steve Halster, AM 1100 Radio. Considering the success that other Bison head football coaches have had here in this game, does it create any additional pressure for you going into this weekend at all? 
not at this time right now. Uh, you know, my concern is just to make sure that, that we're doing everything right um, on and off the football field. Uh, we're going to provide the group, hopefully the best experience that these guys can have being Bison, uh, and, and that's my number one goal as a head football coach. Coach, back uh, here in the third row. Wayne S. with the Richmond Towns Dispatch in Virginia. Um, you mentioned on the, the teleconference last week that uh, one of your biggest concerns coming in was making sure what you did looked like, still looked like Bison football. Mm -hmm. So I was curious, you know, with all the success the program has had, uh, you being in the program, uh, just what have been the biggest keys to keeping that fire burning and making sure you're fighting complacency and uh, keeping that success going year after year? Well, I think the, the first thing that we, we always talk about, we always address early in the season is we treat every year as, as a different year. And there is no carryover. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go back to a couple of years ago. I had a young man by the name of MJ Stump, and I, he had won a national championship as a backup. And we, we asked him, you know, MJ, you won a national champ and championship. And his comment was, Coach, I haven't won one yet. I only win, you only win them when you're a starter at NDSU. And I think that's part of the desire of every kid wants to live up to the expectations that our tradition has shown. Um, so we, we treat every year differently. And this is the last game that the 2019 football team is ever going to play. Um, we're going to look different next year. Uh, we look different than we did a year ago. Uh, each team has their own nuances, their own characteristics, and um, this is a pretty good football team right now that we have. And um, I think that's part of the way that we, we avoid complacency as we continue to challenge them to be who they are and to be the best that they can be in that moment right then. Alex Pensagala, AM 1100 at the flag in Fargo, and they've got some wide receivers in Stapleton and Polk that are explosive. How do you contain them? Well, we got to do a great job of, of uh, taking away some of the RPO game, uh, the easy access throws. Uh, you know, Riley Stapleton, uh, big time receiving threat. Uh, you know, anytime you're defend having to defend a, a wide receiver that's 6'5, uh, you know, and, and they're going to do a great job of identifying what coverage we're in and trying to see where we're going to, are we going to roll it to the field or are they, are they going to roll it back to the X, uh, especially in the three by one formations? We're going to have to do a good job of trying to. Uh, disguise some coverages, uh, you know, do some things cat and mouse with the quarterback and give looks pre-snap and then play a different coverage post-snap. Uh, we can't have them just have easy throws and easy access because both those guys can break tackles and, and, and do a great job of scoring touchdowns and making big plays for, the, for their team. Coach Dave Thomas of JMU Radio again. Uh, yep. Your offensive line you, to run the football as successful as you do starts up front. Yep. Tell us about that unit a little bit. What are their strengths, the, the closeness of the unit on the field, in the, in, the, in the classroom, even outside the football complex? Acquaint us with this offensive line a little bit, if you will. Well, then, if, if we're going to talk offensive line, let's, let's, let's make sure we understand that they're called the Rams. Uh, and that's their nickname, and that's what it's been for a number of years now. Uh, and and they, they really appreciate that. If there's one group or position group on our team that represents who we are, and where we come from, it, it, it's the offensive line. Uh, you know, they, they're an unbelievably tight-knit group. Uh, and uh, majority of them all live together. So it's probably about three or four houses. And uh, we, we have a lot of uh, legacy uh, in that position group. We have brothers. We have sons of dads who've played at NDSU. There's a lot of built-in pride uh, in that room. Uh, you know, some of the things that you have to be able, you have to love football to play on the offensive line because you're going to get plenty of reps at NDSU. You're going to get plenty of individual time, plenty of practice. But uh, uh, they have, in my, in, 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 in my opinion, one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, and A.J. Blazek, and I, you know, for him to come in, in in a group that had great continuity, but to be able to blend in and be seamless, uh, and then uh, we have the five starters are, are, are who they are, outstanding football players. But where people don't see it is our five guys who are in the, in, the, in the wings are just as good as those guys. And so that's why we get excited when we talk about our Rams and, and, the, and the future of Bison football. Back here in the back. Katie Harper from The Breeze. You touched already on how strong JMU's defense is, but when it comes down to game planning, how hard is it to prepare for a defense where it's not only the starters that can make a difference, but it's the guys that rotate in as well? Well, you know, they do get into a number of different sub packages. Uh, they do a good job of, you know, if you're an 11 personnel or a passing situation, they'll get into some, you know, strictly nickel. Uh, scenario. So uh, we have to try to find the right matchups and, and move our playmakers around. Uh, and how can we do that? Is it is it putting different people in the backfield? Uh, is it getting uh, different receivers inside at the X? Uh, all the same things that their offense is going to challenge us with as well. But uh, you know they do a great job defensively. And you know the thing that you you appreciate out of JMU's defense is they don't try to defend you with 
a quantity of calls. It's the quality of calls that they have. You watch them, you can tell they're, they're, they're well coached. They play extremely hard. And for a group as talented as them, that's what gets scary is, is how hard they play uh, during the course of a game. Back over to your right, Coach. Yeah, Nick Cousin, KBRR. Uh, you mentioned Coach Blazik. What impact has he made on this program in his first year? Well, I think just the coming in and, and, and taking over what, in my opinion, is, is, is you know, besides your defensive coordinator, your, your offensive line coach at NDSU might be the most important high, next hire. Because, again, I, as I mentioned before, that room and that position group really sets the table for who we are as a football team. Uh, how we, our, our physical nature starts with our offensive line. Our defense has to be physical so they can survive spring ball. Uh, and, and, and it all you know, helps. We help one another and we work together. But uh, he's done a great job. We've added some things, some wrinkles offensively. Uh, we've, we've tweaked some protections here and there throughout the course of the year. Uh, but to have a guy with his experience and his knowledge to come in uh, and to pick up has been really an asset to, to Tyler Roll and our offensive staff. Okay. That concludes the press conference. That's Thank right. you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. You bet.